So I was flirting with the idea of playing with Art Blakey, of getting to meet him, and just putting it together in my mind how it would all take place. So when I saw in the newspaper that the jazz messengers were playing at a club called the Jazz Forum, I uh, showed up in my blue jeans and plaid flannel work shirt, tennis shoes, and I had my little Walkman tape recorder I was just holding behind me, and I taped the show. Um, and first thing I noticed was I had just heard the band in San Francisco with Winton and Branford Marsalis, and um, the band was smoking. But when I came to see the band a few months later in New York, it was a whole different personnel. Terrence Blanchard was playing trumpet, Donald Harrison was playing alto saxophone, and a fantastic pianist named Johnny O'Neill. And they were taking care of business too. I said, wow, I didn't think art could find other people that were that talented. But uh, that really got through to me as well, realizing that there are some amazing musicians out here, and they all sort of flocked to art. He was like a magnet for them. Um, anyway, I began working. One of my first steady jobs in New York was playing for the jam session that was held at this same club, the Jazz Forum, on Tuesday evenings. The way I got that gig was I just sat in, and the band leader liked the way I played. So I had a gig, and one of the perks of playing for the jam session at the Jazz Forum was that I could get in for free to any of their shows. So I would hear the jazz messages when they would play there. Art was actually living right downstairs from this lost club. So eventually, Art's pianist at the time, Johnny O'Neill, uh, he's the person that, that played the part of Art Tatum in the uh, Jamie Foxx movie Ray. He, uh, he befriended me. He came into the jam session to sit in and really liked the way I played. And he also asked me, he said, Benny, do you think you'd like to play with Art one day? And I said, there's nothing I want more. He said, well, I'm going to introduce you to Art. So eventually that happened. Art came in to hang out one night at the club. Johnny introduced me to him. And I was, again, I had my jeans and plaid flannel work shirt and tennis shoes. Art had a suit and tie on. And uh, after being introduced, Art said, Art had an expression, he used to say, hear with your eyes and see with your ears. He was very perceptive. And after Johnny introduced us, Art said, how long have you been in New York? And I just looked at Art innocently and I said, six weeks. And Art looked me up and down. It was like he was hearing me. He just sort of scanned me. He said, we need more time. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked off. And I knew he was telling the truth. I was very green. Anyway, I just worked very hard my first year in New York, always listening to the band, buying all their records, uh, tape recording their shows, um, which is illegal. But <laughs> it helps me because I stayed abreast of the band's repertoire. And I would just, just eat um, and sleep. Art Blakey. I'd have the headphones on at night when I went to bed, and throughout the day I'd just be practicing along with his recordings and the recordings I made in the clubs. Um, just really, not only trying to learn the music, but trying to absorb the feeling of the band. There was like an axis. Art loved the piano, and certain pianists that were in the band, people like Horace Silver and Bobby Timmons and Cedar Walton, he shared a language with these people, and I would just listen to the way he would match up his cymbal beat uh, with them. And I would try to emulate their way of playing. Anyway, I finally got my chance to sit in with Art. Uh, I don't remember whether it was January or February of 83, but it was at the Blue Note in New York. And uh, it was a good thing I had been practicing, because uh, I sort of like, separate the wheat from the chaff, Art called a song that I would have only known had I been living with this music. He called a song called Miss D.C., which was written for Betty Carter by uh, his former alto saxophonist Bobby Watson's wife, Pamela. And I knew the song well. Now, I don't know how well I played, but I definitely knew the arrangement. And that in and of itself made an impression on Art. So after I sat in with him, after the band finished their set, or call me over and he said, keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to need you one day. And that was it for me. <laughs> he said that. 
I just I had all the inspiration and validation I needed to work hard.